Hi, and welcome to Lock Haven's A Senior Moment. I'm Mary Beth Truitt. I'm the marketing director here at Lock Haven. So glad that you could join us today. There are many, many theories floating around about those people who live an extra long life, especially those people that hit the 100 mile mark or in this day and age, even more, uh, is very common. With me today are two people who have hit that 100 mile <laughs> mark very beautifully, I might add. I have with me Neva Maddie and Pearl Hopman. Uh, both of these ladies live here at Lock Haven in our apartments, and I'm just so glad to have them here as my guest. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Neva, I'll start with you just giving us a short, uh, tell us your age and when your birthday was. My birthday was August the 6th, and I was 100 years old. Okay, so that means you were born in 1913. 13, oh, right. Okay, <laughs> that's wonderful. Pearl, how about you? I'm 102, and I was born on December the 29th, 1911. All right, that is quite a long time ago, and as I said, and as you can see, these ladies have done it very beautifully. Um, you know, I, I can imagine, I'm only imagining this, one of the most popular questions that you must get is, how'd you do it? How, you know, what is the secret? It seems like everyone's always looking for a secret. Um, so... What would you say, Neva? What are um, what is your secret to your long life? I live one day at a time, and thank the Lord that I'm able to be up and going and eat good food. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Martina behind that camera just said, "Amen." <laughs> so, so we we like that answer. How about you, Pearl? I grew up on a farm. And, of course, uh, we were outdoors a lot and had fresh air and lots of hard work. And I was like Neva. I always ate good meals and That's enjoyed great. them. That is wonderful. So living a good life, I'm hearing that. We're going to get into uh, a little bit more specifically about what that actually uh -huh. means. But tell me, uh, let's talk a little bit, and we'll start again with Neva. What was life like for you? Um, Pearl said she grew up on a farm. What was life like for you, Pearl? I mean, I'm sorry, Neva, whenever you were a young girl. Let's just uh, at home. Uh, well, at home, uh, my dad was a farmer, and then we moved to Marion, Illinois, and he was a miner. And uh, there's where I finished my grade school and went to high school. But in the meantime, I had a fall from a pony and broke my arm. And I was late going through school. And that was one reason I didn't graduate until 1932. I see. And mm. it wasn't just, as a matter of fact, I was going to bring this up a little bit later mm. um, in the in the interview because a lot of people might think that your secret to long life is that everything has just been smooth sailing mm -hmm. but I know for Neva in particular that fall from the pony broke her arm so badly and her arm is pretty much mm. it's, it is, straight. it's straight she's never been able to bend mm -hmm. her 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 left arm at the elbow no. since that I can remember the break Yes. And looking at it, and I wasn't but nine years old, but I remember it very well, seeing both those bones out. Yes, a bad break. And in that oh. day, it's probably we didn't rush to a major medical center. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was probably taken care of mm -hmm. even, was it taken care of at home, or did mm -hmm. you go to a hospital? It was at home. The yes. doctor came out, took care of it there. Yes. Now, can you imagine that? Yeah, and no. it was wrapped in what do you call it? Corrugated stuff, you know, kind of brown. Uh huh. I can remember that. It wasn't a board put on there. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so right there in itself is just a real <clears throat> difference. How about you, Pearl? Tell us about um, life whenever you were a young child. Well, I had a lot of falls and 
Uh, remember falling out of the hayloft one time, and, but uh, I never broke any bones at that time. I waited till it got old to break bones. Right. But um, I graduated from uh, high school at uh, the Kirksville, and then I attended uh, Missouri University one summer. I transferred then to Iowa State, and my husband was a vocational agriculture instructor, and we uh, enjoyed working with the young boys. Uh, girls didn't take it back at that time. Right, the Votec. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, we enjoyed uh, the boys very much. That's great. That's great. I don't imagine when you guys were kids and work and living at home, and, <clears throat> you know, you... You probably really worked. You were yes. part of the working family, I would say. That's, Is that correct? That's correct. You know, I can remember hearing my, my parents and their stories of getting up in the morning and going out and doing their chores before they went to school. Yes. Did you ride horses to school then, Neva? No, did you? I, I didn't. No, I didn't either. Okay. We walked. You walked, mm -hmm. all right. That's the way I got there, too. We didn't have buses back then. Did you have? Did your family have a car whenever you were little, as far as? I don't I, know exactly when that would have started. I think Dad got his car when I was about 12 years old. Okay. So mm -hmm. up to that time, it was either buggy or, or walking or? That's right. We Mother had a horse that she named Ribbon, prettiest black horse, and she would drive it everywhere, you know, that she wanted to go. Your mom did. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Dad had the team of horses, right. which he used on the farm, and he hauled logs. Yes. Into town. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does it feel? I'm going to ask you this. Pearl, I'll start with you. How does it feel for you to have lived this long life? I know before we started, Neva w had said, you know, she was born in 1913, and she's like, I just can't believe it. You know, so how does it feel to have lived this long life? Well, when you look back on it, it doesn't seem like a long life. Right. But uh, uh, when you think about the changes, then you realize it has been a long life. Right, right. But, uh, Let, let's talk about some of those changes that you have seen. You know, we just talked about cars, so you really saw the introductions of vehicles into everyday life. Um, what are some of the things that were just absolutely, you know, inventions that you saw in your life? Well, the cars was one because I went to a rural school uh, in, as I was growing up, and uh, uh, the teacher would let us go out when she'd hear a car coming to see it go by. <laughs> and uh, the same thing was true with airplanes. When we'd hear an airplane coming, she'd let us go out to see it go over. So I've seen lots of inventions, and the computer age, of course, is just out of this world. Yes, um, yes. Oh, I, I was going to ask both of you about that. Let me let me go start with. We'll go. I want to talk a little bit about the computer age and technology. Uh, Neva, some of the inventions that you have seen. Well, there's been many of them, <laughs> and uh, I say many of them. They can name name one. That's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, as far as electricity, I was going to say the refrigerator and the television. And, well, machines of all kinds. Right. I mean, just even taking typewriters and, and mm. the evolution of, of typewriters and where we started with that and advanced. where it has come. I mean, mm. you can't even hardly find a typewriter today. You know what I mean, because everything is computerized. Oh, yeah. What, because I, this is really probably going to show my, mm. but... Where, when was electricity? I mean, like, did you all have electricity at all when you were little? Uh, we didn't okay. until uh, we moved to uh, Marion, and uh, Dad worked at the mine, and through the mine, we got electricity. Okay. And we were the only ones that had electricity around there, see. And what's more, it was a 220 line. I don't know why they didn't cut it down, but we had a 220. So I had to have a stove and everything of 220. I see. Okay. Yeah, you know, because um, I can, 
I can just remember that my mother would talk about the different things that she saw. Uh, and telephones were always really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the evolution again of the telephone and how, you know, the, the crank. You, you'd do the crank <laughs> telephones and then you would have the party lines of everybody mm -hmm. around you. Any, mm -hmm. any stories on telephones or anything mm -hmm. that you want to share? Yes. The neighbors would all listen in whenever mm -hmm. they'd hear your ring. And if you was talking about something that they knew about and you didn't, maybe a funeral, for mm -hmm. instance, why they would chirp in and tell you <laughs> <laughs> when it was going to be and all about it. <laughs> and my parents' ring was a short, long, and a short. And yeah. whenever they rang that, you knew that it was time to answer. And uh, um, I think uh, radios came into being along <laughs> about that time, and uh, they had headphones, and you could uh, have one that come over your ears, and uh, it was uh, hearing a device on each side, and you could divide those, and somebody else could hold it up to their ear, and uh, could listen too. So we all enjoyed it. That that is that is very amazing. Yes, I can remember Mom talking about the the one ring the the one ring long ring. I never did quite understand it, but I think that I do now. But when I was a kid, I was like, "What?" You know, because we were pretty accustomed. Of course, now, uh, you know, we don't even many people don't even have landlines. We have just the cell phone. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's so many things that you have seen. One thing that I've noticed um, about both of you ladies and knowing you is you have a good sense of humor. Um, do you think that's been helpful to you as far as carrying you through in life as well? Yeah, I do. I think, it, <laughs> I think it has carried me through a lot. And we always had it at home. My mother was quite a cut up. Uh -huh. So that <laughs> spilt over into the rest of us. <laughs> That's great. How about you, Neva? Yes. Anything to keep you happy and go lucky, as we used to say, you know, mm -hmm. because if you start worrying, first thing you know, you're down in the dumps and not able to be up and going and to enjoy people. That's mm -hmm. right. So we should actually, you know, read or tell a joke every day or mm -hmm. laugh or just have a good time. One more thing that I want to ask you about is uh, we had mentioned about computers and the, the, the digital age. Have, have either one of you delved at all into, do you have a cell phone? Do, you, does, do either one of you have a cell phone? I do not. I do, you do? do you have a computer? No. Okay, we haven't done no. computers. Um, any kind of digital cameras? No? <laughs> okay. You know what? You have done quite well, so don't start now. That's, That's the way I feel. <laughs> I always use the typewriter, so I'm still getting by with it. Do you still have your typewriter yes. then? All right. That is wonderful. Then don't change a thing. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between, like, say, the music, your era of music and your clothes, um, what were some of the dances that you did whenever you were a youngster, if you went to dances? What were some of the dances? Oh, we did the Charleston. Charleston. <laughs> and our clothing was uh, <laughs> full skirts so that when you did the Charleston, your skirt would fly out all around. <laughs> yes, I'd done all kinds of dances. That's great. Neva, were you a dancer? Oh, we attended dances all around where we lived, you know, square dances, round dances, <laughs> at a big time. <laughs> you know, it was a way of socializing, too, mm -hmm. at that time, because, again, now we get in a car and we go, and we're always looking mm -hmm. for something to entertain us. Mm -hmm. yes. But I believe your generation mm -hmm. more, you all entertained mm -hmm. each other. Um, did you go to visiting a lot, like to the neighbors and things like that? Uh, well, yes, and uh, we lived in a row of houses, say, so it was close by where we could get together and play cards or whatever we wanted to do. <laughs> we played all kinds of games, and the neighbors would come over. Sometimes in the wintertime we'd go ice skating, uh -huh. and we enjoyed that very much. What was your favorite era? What was your favorite decade or the favorite your favorite time of your life 30s the, and why 
Pearl? Well, <laughs> I guess that uh, because I was in school and we enjoyed going to all the school activities and mm -hmm. taking part in everything. Yeah. How about you, Neva? What was your favorite day? I think my favorite time was when the children were small mm -hmm. and we had such a wonderful time together and see the different things that they would be trying to do. And then when they entered school, see how well they advanced and all that. <laughs> Your your generation and living to the age that you have, you have lived through the Depression, two world wars, Korean War, Vietnam War, so much. Um, tell me, you know, any kind of memories of that time, the Depression. I mean, how did you make it through? How did you, how did you endure those things? World, what effects even the world wars had on you? Well, now for world. World War One. See, I was quite young, right. but I can remember very well when my uncle went away to war, and how to sad World War One. World War One, and how sad it was. And then when he came home, it was wonderful. And uh, but now you know World War Two. <clears throat> I just I was working and didn't pay much attention to it. Huh. Is that something? Right. Oh. So you didn't have like family that was serving in World War Two? Oh yes, there were cousins. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, they all came back and did all right, you know. Okay. So, uh, but it just seems so. I guess because my marriage had ended, and then I was working and had those two kids, right. I didn't have time to think about anything else. You were <laughs> right. How about you? Well, I well remember the end of World War I. Uh, my father thought that he would have to go, and he went in to get his tests, and they said that he had three daughters and my mother. To, and at that time, women didn't work outside their home. So, uh, uh, and he had flat feet, so he didn't pass the test. And how happy I was when he came home. And then I remember the end of the war, that everybody was celebrating, the uh, trains were tooting their whistles, and uh, we went into town that night. We were living on a farm uh, near Queen City, and um, they burned everybody's caps, jerked them off in their heads, and everybody <laughs> was bareheaded, and they were so happy that the war was over. I remember it very distinctly. and. Uh, the uh, World War II, um, it was just more come over television and right. we remembered it at home. <laughs> right. Well, what what unbelievable, you know, memories of that. Um, I said earlier in this that a lot of people might think that um, that to in order to live a long life that you've had no adversity, you know. So talk about that. How did you make it through the bad times in your life? Because everyone has bad times in, your, in their life, everyone. Um, but how did you make it through? Let's start with Pearl. During the Depression years, um, of course, my parents was living on the farm. and We could have uh, all kinds of food to eat, good food, and uh, because they had their own uh, eggs and milk, and um, we had our own uh, meat and everything that we needed to eat. And as far as clothing was concerned, we uh, had dresses made out of flower sacks, and they were printed and very pretty. And uh, everybody was doing the same thing, so we didn't object to doing it right. at all. And uh, also feed sacks. And the material then was softer than it is now. Mm -hmm. And also for purses, we made them out of uh, inner tubes, old inner tubes. And we would uh, uh, fringe them uh, by cutting them. They were very pretty when we got through with them. And the same thing was true with hats. We would, uh, and you didn't go to church without hat and gloves on back then. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, well, anyhow, we made the hats with a wire frame and then uh, uh, covered them with material, 
They were real pretty. Sometimes those uh, wires would hurt your head. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that it did. I, I read um, in preparing for this that they have found that many share, many, many who have made that 100-mile mark, share four key elements. So I want you guys to, to tell me if, if, if any of these sound familiar to you. They can endure hardships with a positive attitude. They have a purpose in their life. They have service to others. And they have faith. And I kind of know you two ladies uh, uh, just a little bit. Probably Neva better than Pearl through my life. But I really know that that you know, that these qualities are very true for Neva. Can you talk on that, Neva, as far as being able to endure hardships? I know that you have. Um, I know that service to other. Neva is still a volunteer at Lock Haven and has volunteered. Talk about those things. Hardships, do you, do you agree with that, that, that those things have helped you make it through life, your faith? Well, I do. Because if it hadn't been for thinking the good Lord is looking over me and I can do this with his help, and that's the way I have struggled and got through. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about you, Pearl? Yes. The same is true for mm -hmm. me. I've gotten through a lot of hardships, but your faith will carry you through. That's right. That's beautiful. Very nice. What do you guys here at Lock Haven? You live at the apartments, as we said. Um, what do you guys still take part in? Is there are there many activities that you like to enjoy and and do here? Exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. These ladies are exercisers. How about you, Neva? Mm -hmm. Yes, I like exercising, but it had not been going. I find something else I have to do at that time, <laughs> so I've just got to get busy and get down there. <laughs> Do you keep busy? Do both of you yes, keep, keep I busy? keep busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't have enough time during the day to do it all. <laughs> That's very amazing. We um, had a lesson on history this morning about the presidents, so that was interesting too. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, one thing that does, I just think of both of you as being happy people. Do you feel like you're happy, Neva? I do. I've never let anyone or anything come to cause me to worry. I always think, oh, why? That just gets you down. I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that takes care of that one right there. They can endure hardships. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that is great. I, I Like I said, I've known you a long time. I have always known you as a happy person. <laughs> How about you, Pearl? Yes, I've always been happy. That's great. Mm -hmm. Even even through those yes. bad times in life. Mm -hmm. How about a purpose in your life? What do you have you all found the purpose of your life? I I think we all are always on a constant journey possibly to find that. Have you found a purpose in your life? Helping others. Helping others. Mm -hmm. What about you, Nina? And to live one day at a time mm -hmm. and to help others and to always Think of that good Lord that put me here. <laughs> I just read, just just this morning, read an article at home. And mm -hmm. I really like this article because it was talking about a person's biological age, which is what you are, mm -hmm. but there's the other age in which you just, which you really are. You know, because of all the way that your mindset is, and that if we just even constantly think, "Hey, I'm, I'm 25 years old," and if we constantly keep ourselves in that mindset and don't let us get old, I, I have a thing that I do. Maybe you ladies share this with me. I won't use the word "old." I won't say, "Oh, I'm getting old." I might say, "I'm getting older," but I just have never used that word "old." <laughs> Am I on the right track? Yes, you yeah. are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't admit it. <laughs> Don't admit. Lie, a woman can lie about their weight and their age. I've mm. always heard that. Is that right? Mm -mm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can remember one time we were on a trip. I used to go on bus trips quite a bit, you know, and they were talking about age, 
and Jeanette Maid was with me, and she said, you tell them how old you are. And I was 95, and here they were, you know, 75 or 78. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so you wouldn't tell your age. I wouldn't tell my age. <laughs> and you were with those youngsters who were yes. only 75. <laughs> I surely was. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to um, add to this, any any words of wisdom, any quotes that has kept you going through these years? Well, I would say, just always say, I can do it, and thank the Lord that he gives you the strength to do it. That's great, Neva. How mm -hmm. about you, Pearl? Yeah, any any great, great words of wisdom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no, not really, no more than what she said. I think that uh, you've got to pray about it and uh, make sure that uh, you're on the right track. Pearl, when's your next birthday? December the 29th. December. So you just turned 102 on December 29th. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Neva will have a birthday this coming summer. Uh, next August. Next August. You're mm -hmm. a Leo? Are you a Leo? And uh, what, what's your birth date? August what? August the 6th. Leo. Yes. I'm August the 8th. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll celebrate together. <laughs> that is right. That is right. You just live to be as old as she is. Well, I'm hoping for that, and you know, as and as well, I want to live well yes. to that age. Mm -hmm. That yes. is right. Okay, uh, you're just a young girl. <laughs> a young girl. I love. It. I love hanging out with you guys. <laughs> oh, no. yes, you look young. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. This has been just a pleasure, and uh, we want to send well wishes out to everyone watching. Uh, you're always, as they say, only as old as you think that you are, as old as you feel. Is that how? Is that how that saying goes? That's right. All right. <laughs> Wishing you a great day, and we'll see you the next time we have a senior moment. <laughs>